Hello. <coughs> Welcome to the Sunbird Crochet Podcast. My name is Claudia and I'm coming to you from Germany. Today I have for you two finished objects, a new work in progress and I'm planning another project. And I hope to focus on some good news today. My first finished object today is the Frida shawl. I finished it. I'm loving it. The pattern is by Air Crochet. And yeah, what can I say? <laughs> it's, uh, it's beautiful. It has a lovely drape. I was using a four millimeter hook size and the pattern uses lots of single crochet back loop that's uh, us terms and um, i finished a little early because i only made four last rows didn't want to start a new ball of gray yarn i'm still very pleased that i chose not to go for a more drastic um, contrast. So um, I've been wearing this and I went to a forest to have a little photo shoot with this. I posted it on Instagram already so you might have seen it but um, I'll insert it here again as well. Highly, highly recommend the pattern and if you haven't bought it already I think there's still the special on if you take the code I think it's Frida Shawl Cal um, but to be sure just go and have a look at Faye's the Crochet Circle podcast latest episode uh, she's talking about that uh, special code and then you can get some percentages of the pattern. This is not the last time I've made a Frida shawl and I'm looking into buying another pattern from Air Crochet because her designs are really timeless, elegant and beautiful. Modern crochet. She has one of her sweater designs in the Murid edition two and yes that's going to happen soon isn't it finished object number two is my little pineapple purse yes i've made one i've been using cotton yarn for this and i started here at the bottom with a circle in light green basically you start with a magic ring in the middle six single crochets and i'm talking about us terms here then the next round you do an increase in every stitch like two single crochets in each stitch which gives you then 12 stitches 
Then the next one you make an increase, a single crochet, an increase, a single crochet all around. Then the next round you make an increase, single crochet, single crochet, increase, single crochet, single crochet, and so on. The next round you do increase and three single crochets, increase and three single crochets. And I think that's about it. I've made... No, I added another one, another row of increase and four single crochets. And after that, you see that I made a... That's the front loop of the last green round. So I worked here in the back loops only. So here you see I made a row of single crochets in my new color. And then in the next round I made popcorn, a popcorn stitch, a double crochet, a popcorn stitch, a double crochet stitch, and so on and so on all around. And then in the next row I shifted the whole sequence to the left and I made a double crochet front post around each popcorn I made previously and in the double crochet stitch I've made um, a popcorn and then the next round I chain two and to lift the hook again and then I do the same and it's the same, it's the same, and the same. Sometime here I decreased, I decreased the size of the bag. I a front post double crochet two together around two popcorns. And then I worked another popcorn into the next stitch. And so I decreased, I decreased uh, the size of the bag. But then I went back to my previous kind of instructions until I reached right up here because I wanted to be able to pull this open and close. So there I made a double crochet, chain one, skip one stitch, double crochet, chain one, skip one stitch all around, which gave me enough room to later put my uh, drawstrings in there. And then I made a row of uh, single crochets. I single crocheted into each stitch and chain space. So um, then I made here a chain changed back into the green color and I added some leaves. I believe I just chained, chained a number of stitches, something like 14 stitches. And then I made a pico here on the top and crocheted back down. Then I made a three, three single crochets before I, I chained the next leaf. And then in the next round I went back and also crocheted up here on, on the other side of the chain. And in between I made a three... Uh, here I made a three, uh, three single crochets together so that I make one stitch out of the three here in the gap in the bottom between the two leaves and once I had that established I went back with my golden yarn and I added a little border just not the whole way just here at the tips of the leaves um, just single crochets. Then I also made a surface here, another row of little leaves. I, I made a single crochet here and chained a number of stitches. I think it was something like four or five. And then I went back into the next gap of the, between the leaves. And once I had these chain spaces created, I then made um, trebles. I chained four and then I made three trebles together. 
before I chained another four and slip stitched into the same chain space, then in the next chain space, slip stitch, chain another four to get the height again. And I repeated that all around so that I have uh, like clusters of little leaves. And that was the bag. Then I braided with three strands of yarn, I um, actually tied it around the handle of my desk drawer and then I was able to braid it like you do. <laughs> I made two strings, very long strings, and then the ends, I made a knot in them. And they had little, like a, almost like a little tassel. I covered the knots by uh, crocheting into the chains of my braided string and I went all around 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 and could continue single crochets until I had like a little miniature pineapple and then I just uh, snipped off the ends so that they are all more or less equal equal size so I have little pineapples at the ends of my drawstrings and the big one. Uh, it looks better if I put something inside. It is quite stiff. I mean, it does uh, have some kind of sturdiness because of the popcorn stitches, but uh, it's definitely better if I have at least a hanky in there or uh, I don't know, something. Yes, so this is my movie and stitch project finished for the movie Pride and Prejudice 1995 version BBC. Well, it's actually a TV series, but uh, yeah, just take any, just take any Jane Austen movie with Regency style ridicule bag, little pineapple purse and I like it that it's so small I made it very small on purpose because uh, I thought it would be cuter this way and um, a bigger pineapple I, I wouldn't like a bigger pineapple I think a small one is just about, about the right size by the way I've used a 2.5 millimeter hook and cotton yarn just some from my stash. Yes. And in case you don't know the popcorn stitch, that's you make five double crochets into the same stitch. Then you take your hook out of the loop, you put it through the first double crochet stitch you've made, and then you put it, you push it through the loop back again, you pull the loop tight. Then you yarn over and you pull through the loop and the stitch so that you uh, kind of pull them all together and they pop out and that's your popcorn. Yes, so these are my finished objects and let's go and have a look at works in progress. <music> I've made a magic ball by tying some of my advent minis together to create to wind up a big yarn ball and then i went and bought the pattern the knitting pattern of a muscle bearer hat a design by isolde teak yes i've joined <laughs> i've joined the crowd <laughs> and um this is my progress from last night. I started at four and stopped crochet and uh, stopped knitting, 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 <laughs> um, at about seven o'clock, something like that, seven or eight. So this is my progress in four hours. I'm not as fast a knitter as I am a crocheter. 
I'm using my Chao Gu circular needles. I think they are three millimeter. I have a 2.5 or three, but I think it's three, three uh, millimeter in size. You start in the middle. This is a paid for pattern, so I can't really say too much, except that it's um, totally fine for a um, beginner knitter with some experience. Uh, yeah, so you begin in the middle. She gives you a couple of ways how to cast on the initial stitches which you need. You, there's a method actually by using a crochet hook, uh, but I just used Judy's Magic Cast On, which is my preferred method of casting on for a toe-up sock. And there is there are a lot of tutorials on YouTube if you if you just look it up and um, yeah, I th I think I actually. I linked, I linked to my toe up sock recipe videos last time in my last episode, so you might be able to find it there. Yeah, so uh, what I've learned so far in this, oh, the sun, the sun is coming in. Uh, <laughs> shall we move? I don't know. Let me just see if I can. Pull you closer and maybe that's better. Yeah, so um, what I've learned so far with this uh, pattern is how to make left and make right increases. Um, these are stitches which you add to, to your knitting project and they are either going towards the one side or the other side. And uh, so that your rows are still in that direction and the new, the new stitches are either added to that side or that side. So it's a left or a right leaning increase. That was new for me. So I've learned something. Check! <laughs> yes, and uh, I've started with this green yarn greenish with some speckles in there and now I'm on a turquoise yarn which kind of has like a color pooling. I don't mind that it looks a little bit like leopard spots. <laughs> and um, yeah I hope it's it's the right size. We will see because in the pattern it says do a uh, Continue doing this sequence until you have enough uh, fabric to measure your gauge. And um, <laughs> I was uh, quite in my element, knitting away. And then I finally realized, oh, maybe I should just check my gauge. And I did, and I was already past the number of rows which I need for my head size, but um, well, for the size which which she wants me to do. Uh, but it's not such a big deal, I think. It's like two stitches more for my gauge. And um, for all I know, uh, this might be a good thing actually, because my head is a whopping 59 centimeter circumference. So I'm, uh, I don't have a normal size head. <laughs> I'm big headed or <laughs> yeah, whatever. So um, this is my first attempt at this muscle burrow head. The idea is that you start, start with few stitches, you increase until you have a certain size. Then you just knit in the round like a tube, pretty much like my tube shawl, which I did before. Um, and once you've reached so and so uh, much of a length, then you start decreasing again and until you basically basically you copy this kind of construction 
but like becoming smaller when you have one long tube with closed ends and you push your hand and the one end into the other end and then you have a double double thickness of a head and i hope it will work out yeah so that's the plan the muscle burrow head is quite the craze and um if you're usually a crocheter more than a knitter, I can still recommend this pattern because it's uh, as long as you you relax and just don't cramp up with your hands and shoulders and are willing to learn a little bit new like these, make one left, make one right. Uh, that's fine and you use stitch markers so you don't even have to count your stitches that's also easy peasy lemon squeezy <laughs> yeah anyway i'm enjoying this project will it fit me we will see that's my one work in progress now my second is uh, only an idea in my head at the moment since we are finished now with the letter p in my movie and stitch challenge then I now have to look for a movie starting with the letter Q and a project to go with it. So my thoughts are... There aren't so many movies starting with the letter Q, you might think. There is a lot related to Queen or... Quigley or Quartermain or um, Quo Vadis. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, uh, my first plan had been The Quiet Man with John Wayne. It would have fitted very nicely with the uh, upcoming St. Patrick's Day because that movie The Quiet Man is actually playing in Ireland. But the the way they they uh, filmed Ireland and Irish characters are so cringe with worthy wrong. <laughs> I can't bring myself to um, recommend this movie to you. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> yeah. So at the moment, I'm thinking about doing something with relation to the movie the queen's corgi which is a children's movie an animated movie and uh, not that i can recommend watching it for adults uh, <laughs> but corgis are cute i, I really like corgis and uh, they are humorous little characters and I thought I might just uh, crochet a little corgi and at the moment I'm on the hunt to find some corgi crochet patterns might have to come up with my own idea but uh, yeah there are a lot of corgi crochet patterns out there I just haven't found anything which I really like but what I really like is uh, I'm actually following two corgi accounts on Instagram. <laughs> they just make me smile. I mean, on a bad day, you just look at them. They're waggling, wiggling bums and the way they lie on the ground like little bread loaves. And so cute. Also very noisy. Uh, don't get me wrong. I don't want to have a dog myself i'm more a cat person but um, i'm following the account ralph the corgi ralph was together with his kind of brother george but george passed away and now ralph has a new brother the brother from another mother and his name is harry and harry is uh, ralph is now a little bit like the senior in this team and Harry is uh, just so cute. 
he has like a mole on his tummy in the shape of a heart and Harry is uh, really captured my heart as well and uh, yes he uh, Harry helped Ralph and his family to get over George's death so yeah I'm watching I'm following Ralph a corgi I'm also following Marcel Le Corgi, who is Le Corgi on uh, Instagram. He has a French mother and Pierre Le Chef as his father, his daddy. And uh, unfortunately, Marcel is, he needed an operation. There are, there are breed specific illnesses when it, corgis as well uh, so Marcel had to have a back operation something at the spine and uh, I'm I don't know exactly what it is but uh, he's recovering now and he goes to therapy and uh, yeah it's unlikely that uh, that his uh, family will watch this but if you do then uh, I wish him a speedy recovery and uh, Marcel is a beautiful corgi and he often visits old people in homes and home for seniors <laughs> and also in hospitals. So uh, those people who just need a cuddle and uh, he used to do that and I hope he will return soon. Uh, one of his Instagram friends is playing Newton in the upcoming Bridgerton season two. Yes, there is a corgi featuring very prominently at least in the book and uh, I know that that there is a corgi in Bridgerton too. He will be the cause for some wet shirt scenes <laughs> aka Mr. Darcy scenes. <laughs> I think the author Julia Quinn was very much uh, inspired by Pride and Prejudice BBC 1995 version. Yes, <laughs> we are firmly into chatting now. So I would like to focus on some good news today. First of all, Marilyn, who is wholly hooked on Instagram. She's a crochet designer and pattern tester and she's a new mom. Congratulations! She had her first baby and uh, welcome Archie. Then I would like to show you something. Now my mother is making teddy bears. She's sewing them, stuffing them and embroidering the nose and the mouth etc. She does everything so uh, that you have finished teddy bear in the end and I gave her one of my gauge swatches remember remember the Frida shawl which I made with the uh, mohair yarn I couldn't I couldn't frog it and reuse it so it's now a little Frida shawl in miniature for a teddy bear This teddy bear has enormous feet, by the way. <laughs> so uh, he never has to go cold outside. Uh, this is actually the back side of uh, Frida shawl. It's here on the other side, but my mother likes the stripes. So you could, you could actually wear the Frida shawl on either side. So uh, yes. Another Frida Shawl enthusiast. <laughs> I just thought I would show you what you can do with uh, little gauge swatches if they are triangular. In other news, I talked about my Regency dresses in length, so I won't do that again now, but uh, Tiffany asked me if I could uh, take some photos of me wearing my costume which she made, the last one, the pelisse with the uh, petticoat and amethyst. And 
I said yes, of course. So I went in one of my during one of my lunch breaks. I went into the garden. Uh, I took some photos, and uh, yeah, I thought you might like to see see these photos. I've posted some of them on Instagram already, and uh, this also shows my little pineapple reticule in action. <laughs> And I'd like to finish today with some thoughts about self-respect and self-love. It's all about starting your day in a positive way. So my suggestion would be having a quiet, healthy breakfast. I mean, did you? Are you having breakfast in the mornings? I used to go out to work without having any breakfast. So these days... I'm actually making myself a smoothie every morning. Uh, yes, that's also why I've gained a little bit of weight. But uh, it's healthier to start the day with, uh, with something in your stomach. Don't start your day with an empty stomach. And uh, while you're eating or drinking your breakfast, do that without social media and the news in the background. It just helps to digest. Uh, there are quite a lot of difficult things to swallow these days and to digest. So do yourself a favor and uh, have your breakfast without any anything which upsets you. Now, every now and again, we feel quite overwhelmed with negative thoughts and thinking. So take a step back and reflect on everything you have and which you value and think about all the things you are thankful for instead of everything you don't have or which could be better. Yes. Get outside and see all the seasonal changes. Good weather is such a big change to the mood. I I'm now taking my time to go outside every lunch break and also I'm taking a little walk right after finishing my work so that I get a bit of fresh air, which I neglected in the last two years because of the COVID situation. But uh, fresh air is really important and here in Germany it's now springtime and I love seeing all the changes in nature, the little spring buds poking out of the earth and yes the crocuses and now the trees and bushes are sprouting and are about to have some green leaves again and then nature comes back into life just like we will once all the corona nonsense will stop. Breathe in deeply and when you exhale, release all your negative thoughts and feelings. A fresh mind. I uh, used to do Tai Chi, which is very relaxing, but uh, in the end, I'm not a patient person, so Tai Chi, even though it was relaxing for me, I was too impatient to do it. Like you repeat the same moves over and over again. And uh, I would recommend trying it. You can start by just watching some YouTube videos and uh, do your own routine outside. Uh, but... Uh, yeah, it helps to relax and I was as I was saying I was taught during Tai Chi lessons that if you inhale and then exhale and you make a physical movement with your hands outstretched 
like you're pushing away all the negativity. That helps as well. Fresh mind. I sound like a silly person, but uh, indulge me. Try it. If nothing else, you get some fresh air in your lungs. <laughs> Last but not least, after pain comes love. Never stop believing that. And uh, yes, so I'm finishing today's episode. And there was no incoming, unusual for me. And there was no squirrel segment because I gave in and bought the pattern which tempted me. I hope that you will get some time for yourself, some quality time, some relaxing time and some happiness this week. It's almost weekend anyway. So maybe I should rather say enjoy your weekend. Have fun, go outside, do something nice. <laughs> I'm going to talk to you soon again. Bye.